Hey everybody, Texas Trucker here, Lance is performing shop along the Star Mopars.com. Sunday afternoon, we got some time out here in the shop and it is cold, <laughs> to say the least. So, we had the snow pass and everything, it's kind of melted off, but uh, just super strong north winds right now. Uh, I had some uh, quick detailer on top of this box that's right by the door. Came out yesterday and I was like, man, why is this tabletop wet? Well, it froze and cracked, so that was fun. But uh, we're here and you can probably see by the title and what you've been staring at what we have planned. So I'm going to try to get this done before I lose feeling in my hands. And what we're looking at is the Vulcan 350 pound capacity welding cart. So funny thing is I've got plans for this. I haven't opened the item that goes with this, uh, which you would think I would have done. And it might be a space heater, or it might not. We'll just kind of have to wait and see how it pans out. But uh, this thing is typically going to retail for $119 currently. Again, the glory days of the $99, you know, like sticker sticker price before discount, those are gone. Uh, so $119 is the new standard price. Uh, the previous two-week cycle, the instant savings, this was on for $104, so basically $15 bucks off. I figured that's pretty solid deal. Uh, this is actually a gift from my mom. Uh, ties in with the birthday, so can't argue with that. And uh, like I said, we'll just, for all I know, I might release you know the videos in a different order. But as of right now, uh, this doesn't have its companion just ready just yet. So uh, with that said, this is the box. This is what it looks like. I think it's around 41 pounds or so. Nothing too crazy. Unless, of course, you're like me and you carry it through the wind. That always <laughs> adds a little bit of interest to it. Uh, basically, looking at the dimensions here before we cut into this, you're going to be 12 and 1 8 wide, right? So right here, we're going to have, you know, 12 1 25. Then from it looks like post to post, it could be tray to the front lip. Uh, again, whether it's this round post to the lip or it's the corner out, I'm not sure. But 27 and 5 8, so 27 6 25. Those are going to be the critical dimensions. If you're putting a welder on this, a plasma cutter, uh, whatever it might be, a generator, a cooler, anything, that's kind of your base plate that you have to work with. So clearly, if you could not tell from this structural deal, you got the uh, big 8 inch heavy duty rubber wheels, and you got two 2 and a half inch swivel casters there. The way this is going to pan out, that is going to actually be the back. Uh, if you kind of see that chain sticking there, that's where your bottle would go. Uh, by having the low and the high spot, it'll handle you know your tiny little bottles, it'll handle the big ones, anything in between. So basically, uh, nitrous, you know, oxygen purge size, all the way up to like your mid-tier acetylene stuff, all the way up to the big ones, well, you know, your CO2, your argon, that type of stuff. So you should be covered, whatever you're doing. Lots of different hooks. Uh, one of the things people tend to like on this is right here, uh, the front pull handles. As we come over here, you'll actually kind of see what I'm talking about. Uh, this would be a front view loaded with a Vulcan welder. Could be titanium, I can't really tell since it's not colored. <laughs> But uh, it looks like it includes a two-tiered shelf. I believe the label's covering that up. And then, of course, down below, you got space for big items, your hood, whatever you want to throw down there. Uh, grinding stuff. You do you. Uh, looking at the specs, 37.5. Again, I think the shipping weight's like 40-something. Total capacity, again, 350. Overall dimensions, according to this, you're going to be looking at 36 and 3 quarter. I'm trying to hold this strap out of the uh, frame for you. Uh, high 19 and a quarter wide, 37 and a half long. Uh, the gas cylinder capacity is up to 65 pounds. <laughs> right there, I was telling you what you can do. TIG stick, MIG, all that stuff. So, that's about it. What I'm going to do, it looks like this is the type of box where the lid comes off, you know, as like a bookend, if you will. So I'm going to flip this over, we'll cut it, and then we'll have essentially all of the contents up against this lid. It'll be face down. Could be the best way, could be the worst way, I'm going to figure it out. But yeah, that's your introduction here. This is what we'll be throwing together. I'll probably quickly cover what tools we need, if any. 
and uh, then we'll take a look at the finished product. I'll also spin you over and show you my other, I guess we could do that right now. So I'll just trek over through here. <laughs> and, uh, I don't think I've ever released the video on this guy, but it's been fantastic. Uh, right here is my MIG setup, right? And uh, a bunch of junk and packaging and mowers. <laughs> but I actually really like this cart. And the problem is they still make this, uh, but it's a situation you can't get the blue powder coat anymore. I think it's just black. But uh, yeah, that's that's my little MIG. It's a Lincoln 175. Man, that goes back a while. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's what I have for the MIG welder. Again, this might be honestly a space heater holder. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, anyway, that's what I have there. So this was kind of a step up. And I know what some of you are going to say aside from like, man, clean this place up. And believe me, that's what I'm, what I'm working on. <laughs> but uh, what we have going, a lot of people would be like, man, you should get like the big Vulcan cabinet, you know, with like the closed steel cabinet, you know, kind of like a mini toolbox. I'll tell you right now, uh, that thought crossed my mind, but I sort of like this setup where I have more space. So like, there's my plug, uh, there's the cable. I mean, that's 50 foot. I can go anywhere in this shop with that thing. I just like everything parked here until I need it. If I want to roll out to the other side of the shop, if I want to go up to the bench on the other side of the compressor, I can do anything. <laughs> so uh, that's the way we're gonna, you know, run with this one too. So uh, this cart will probably park here till we roll it out wherever I need the heater. Again, if we're putting a heater on it, I don't know. But uh, we'll sort of be able to compare the carts is ultimately what I'm trying to get at. So this is the old school. I think it was probably what Chicago Electric <laughs> that thing. Uh, geez, it's it's got to be like. 15-ish, somewhere like in the 12 to 17 years old, probably 15 plus years old. So uh, again, I don't, I don't keep tabs on like when Harbor Freight switch colors, but it's been great. So I don't have anything negative to say about it. But uh, yeah, let's get back to Vulcan land and get that thing thrown together. And boom, here we are. No, this is uh, what the box is sitting on. <laughs> you think like, hey, what's going on? I haven't seen a video on that. Well, you would have. Uh, but when I opened this thing up, you know, I got to stay home for my birthday, wash the car a couple of weeks ago, and I thought, you know what? Got plenty of time. I'm going to get this thing unboxed. I'm going to cut into it. I'm going to assemble it, and I'm going to, like, go over the bottom side of the car. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> and, uh, no, I couldn't. You know why? No hardware. None. None whatsoever. So, uh, trying to be the uh, good person that I am, I took to it to myself to email, as per the instructions, Harbor Freight. Uh, typically, you know, back in the day, you'd always get to like, please, customer, don't return this to the store. Call this 800 number. That predates emails, of course. And we'll take care of it. Whatever's wrong. Missing parts, missing pieces, missing hardware, you know. We'll bend over backwards to accommodate you. So I'm sitting here thinking like, cool, you know, I'll just shoot him an email, say, hey, I didn't get the hardware, maybe they'll like throw in a cup or a coupon or something. No. <laughs> Straight up the response, uh, which took like five days or so, uh, basically said, hey, sorry, the manufacturer doesn't have parts and doesn't send parts. You'll have to return that to the store and get another one. Classic, right? So <laughs> that's why that's there. True story, I don't know if I'm going to get that again. Uh, it's... There's a lot of creeper detail seats that have come to the market very recently. They're all super similar to this one. Uh, Adams has one that's, yeah, it's $20 cheaper, but I also get a lot of 20% off coupons from them. I don't from Harbor Freight. That's a very rare thing now. Uh, the 20% off makes that roughly, you know, the same price. And I don't know. This also wasn't on the shelf. I had to ask for it. It was in the back. Uh, which I was afraid they wouldn't have it, and that's kind of one of the main things I was going to get. Uh, so I was very excited about it, but now I've kind of soured a little bit. Um, so I don't know. I don't know how you don't have the hardware <laughs> at all, but that's another story for another day, and it's just a little filler here for you. Why? Because I seriously hope this has the hardware. I don't feel like lugging both of these back into a store. So uh, anyway, we're going to go to town, get this thing flipped over. I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. Like, I feel like we can cut that with this lid down lift the bottom out maybe we'll flip it back who knows but i'm gonna have it upside down so we can block it open and then uh, we'll be able to check it out 
and hopefully have the freaking hardware so uh, wish me luck we'll see how it goes all right so there she is i've cut the tape again this is how this was delivered and i say delivered because this was delivered uh, this is one of those situations i get off work late i can't get to the store before they close the sale was going away ordered it online and uh, it took a long time the rest of the stuff that i ordered at the same time that stuff just got to fort worth <laughs> and, uh, uh, that's a long long time it was delayed because of the snow and the ice and everything but prior to that it took a long time too so uh, this was delivered i say that because i think it's important that companies are aware of what their stuff looks like when it goes freight this was fedex ground of course not in terrible shape obviously dinged up this got delayed before the snow for two days because fedex claimed they had to relabel it uh, they say the barcode was not readable and they had to relabel it so I deal with freight all the time. I've never once seen that one, so that was a new one. <laughs> so there is a hole right there in the sea. Um, lots of little things. I'm optimistic that this will have the hardware. I've heard small parts that sound like they're rolling around, so I guess that's a better sign than not having anything <laughs> with our creeper seat. But yeah, the bottom, if this was in store, fresh off a pallet on their own truck, this would actually look really good presentation-wise. This has just been on a FedEx truck lost a label went through snow and ice uh, and it's kind of been thrown around a little so it's not as good looking but yeah that that actually is a uh, pretty nice presentation for the bottom of the box so without further ado i think i'll flip this over again and slide the top off i think that's probably going to be the better option here as i cut the tape so uh, we'll see what she looks like opened up all right so so far so good again when you see tons of clear tape and it's been beat up you never know if this was like a returned item or if like the freight line, you know, just kind of threw it together for you. I guess they've been rough with it. So the lid came off just like I hoped it would. And as you can see, this is what we're faced with. The fact that they're styrofoam and plastic it leads me to believe this is a new unit. Again, typically when you have it shipped out, it's going to be a higher probability that you don't get somebody's return deal that they've like harvested parts from. So that's optimistic, but this is what we look like. I'm going to get all these panels out. I assume there's like casters or hardware in that box. And as long as I see nuts and bolts, I'll, I'll be a happy little guy here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull everything out. We'll take a look at it then and go about putting it together. All right, so first layer was two steel shelves. This is your second layer. You got your 8-inch rubber. Again, I assume casters and hardware in there. It could be an empty box for spacing. I don't know. We've got smaller dividers here, and we've got the tube frame. Again, right there, that's our two pieces. They've got nice Vulcan logos on the other side. But uh, One of the perks about doing videos and YouTube stuff, yeah, it's more tedious and takes longer amounts of time and everything. But if this turns out to be a bombshell or I don't have hardware again and we're missing something, I've got like video evidence as I you know deconstruct the entire package from the point of arrival to the point of concern so uh, we'll go through this again there's probably a couple more layers we'll just quickly showcase what's there all right so the box was not just filler it had casters chains some brackets i've still not seen any nuts and bolts i haven't like investigated that thoroughly but this looks to be the bottom layer so we have uh, the two rubber pull handles got some more frame pieces some tubes some sort of a long rod uh, what looks like a card file basket that hopefully has hardware, I guess, while we're here together. Oh, cool. Okay, so a uh, little plastic case. Let's this sucker open. Uh, I think I'm going to need my other hand to do this. So anyway, that's what was in there. I was kind of concerned <laughs> on what I saw there. But yeah, I'll just get everything pulled out and uh, we'll go to town. I'll showcase that and then it's probably just going to be me assembling it after we run through the tools. So uh, we'll be back. Oh yeah, I had to grab the uh, little VIT driver there that I'm going to swap into that bag. But check it out. We got our hardware. <laughs> that makes me happy because it means I can at least start to assemble this thing before I find out stuff's missing. Unlike our creeper detail seat, which had no hardware. So uh, I guess when this is done, uh, tips looks like they would fit in here uh, on the MIG side of things. Small hardware, grinding accessories, whatever. Uh, kind of a perk. The latch was a little cumbersome. Again, I'm cold and my thumb doesn't really work that well. But uh, we got in here and we've got hardware, which means we can start putting this thing together. So let's make that happen. All right, so it took a few minutes here to actually dig and fish everything out and get it segregated as it should be for a speedy assembly. 
Uh, you basically got four different sizes of bolts. You've got two giant locks. You got some spacers over here. You got some sort of a shim. You got some uh, clips here, I guess, for our wheels probably. And then flats and locks is how I separated them. Uh, so basically everything looks to be M6. And uh, I have my handy dandy little gauge over here so we can confirm and check everything. <laughs> and dropping this down right here, as you can see, M6 is where we're fitting. And then we basically, it's super more difficult to do than I anticipated. Uh, you're going to have 35 millimeter bolts. You're going to have, I believe these are 30s right there. Again, I tell you this in case you want to like go in and, uh, you know, do your own hardware or switch it out or get specialty fasteners. There's a 10 and then right here, I want to say these look like a 50. Yeah. So everything is M6. Basically, if I remember correctly, 10, 30, 35, and 50. Uh, I think everything's going to get a flat and a lock. Uh, there's only two nuts, and that's about it. So in terms of our assembly, we have elected to go with uh, Mr. Floppy here. Uh, of course, if I lock that down, we may never get it locked uh, again. So we have the Matco. Uh, since I really don't have like a, a good selection of metric sockets outside of the Craftsman stuff, uh, I started to get the Hazette Smart case out. I decided not to because uh, I wanted to use these new Capris. Like I said, I'm someone that actually uses impact sockets as you know hand sockets very, very often. So especially metric stuff. We got this one. I've got that and a Philo T handle if I want to go more delicate. We've got a ratcheting from Vera, and then we just got our uh, standard Open Box 13 from Stavilla. So. Right now, that's all I've got to assemble it. But again, this is kind of a cool little deal. And that thing that I said looked like a file box, you know, sort of like if you had papers or drafts or prints or something handy at your station, I guess that's going to go underneath a shelf. And then this stays in there. So uh, this, I think you could pull those out if you wanted to, but they like all are going to come as a unit. Uh, so maybe these front ones. <laughs> I don't know. That might be bonded. Uh, but basically, I know nozzle or uh, tips would fit. You might be able to like wedge nozzles in there. Kind of depends what you're doing. But yeah, I mean, I can't complain too much because it's a decent way of doing this. My advice, since Vulcan is kind of like your premium house brand uh, in terms of like welding accessories, carts, and machines, bag the hardware. <laughs> You know, like, uh, I'm not going to lie, there wasn't a single bin that didn't have a flat and a lock in it. I realize this came FedEx, it's been thrown around, just me flipping it around probably dislodged a few. It's not the end of the world, it's not a big deal, but if you just had these in small bags, and even if it was just the flats and the locks, and the nuts maybe, you know, leave the bolts, leave the big pieces, but just having them bagged, you wouldn't waste any time doing that. So that's my only uh, knock so far, and that's just again, because if this was Chicago, <laughs> I probably wouldn't mention it. I'd say that would be nice. But being Vulcan, it's like, step it up a notch. You know, that's kind of like, you want to sell Icon? Well, you gotta, you gotta ratchet it up a little bit, right? So uh, that would be my advice. This is not a metal hinge on this case either. So it's going to break. That's not a question of if, it's a question of when, but it is a nice touch in the meantime. This looks like standard size of like, say, the small Plano boxes, you know, if you're into fishing or something. Uh, so you could do that. You could probably, it also looks like the Ghidorah L-Box minis that you can get real cheap from KC Tool. Something will fit in there, even if it is paperwork or gloves or something. But yeah, I got this divided. Uh, that's what it looks like we're going to run with. It's just some... Uh, you know, 10 millimeter sockets and wrenches, and we'll start trying to put this thing together. All right, it's starting to lose feeling in the hands already. I want to walk you through what we've got. Number one, you want to do everything hand tight right off the bat so you have a little bit of flex, a little bit of play. This entire frame sort of has like the nut certs, if you will. So like top down, you're going to have a nut already in place, which is super handy and convenient. Beats you having to like come in manually do everything. What this was, this is your M6, you're going to have your flat and your lock, and then the bolt head, of course, dropping down. This is the bottom, right? So you have your frame, left and right, and your bottom panel. The frame pieces are identical, however, there's going to be one key difference, and if I take you up here, and you look from this side, you see this hole has just 
<laughs> that's really hard to tell. It's smooth right here. Let me just do that right. And if we come over here, let me just do a terrible, terrible background. You can't really, now you can see. So right there, that is not smooth. This, if you can see it from time to time, that is actually, again, I'm having to freehand this. So I don't have the tripod for a freehand. And if I try to focus, it's really difficult. You want these facing in. That's what I'm getting at, all right? So back to something you can hopefully see. These are 30 millimeter, okay, into this bottom frame. These right here are 35 millimeter. that are gonna go here, responding on the other side, here and here. So you'll note the Vulcan logo. This is the bottom plate. You can easily identify it because it's straight. It's kind of got like the lip. It's closed in all the way and then you have these giant nuts welded for presumably the casters down there. The other piece is going to have the cutouts for your cylinder bottles. So when you kind of look at this, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. I've got mine flipped opposite of this. But the closed side of the frame is where the casters are going to be, right? So you can kind of make sense of that. There's the closed side, there's your boss nut for the caster. And then if we look at this platform here, the caster side is going to have the closed lip. So the upper platform that we're about to go grab is going to have a lip just like this side. And then the side with the cutouts for our uh, tungsten rods and then of course the bottle is going to face this closed frame side. So 30 millimeter, 35 millimeter. Why do I keep stressing that? In your toolbox where the hardware is, it's going to have bounced around. I had several bolts out of place, not near as many, of course, as the flats and locks. But check this stuff. This is why it's important. Line everything out. If you have to go through the instructions ahead of time, you do that. If you can just look at the bolts and line them up into groups so you grab them. 30 versus 35, that's something you can very easily just grab inadvertently and then you're gonna to have to go backtrack and try to figure out where you put the wrong hardware in plan it out ahead of time that's what we're gonna do here another thing you know you like line up your logos just for aesthetics unless you want it like cross-stepped so you can see Vulcan visible from each side but anyway we'll go grab that get it in place kind of show you that and I'll see if we need anything or if we can just thread those uh, casters in. All right, so new tool, the level, it wants you to have the top and bottom level. I'm not sure how you do that when this is cantered back, <laughs> like by design, this uh, upper shelf. So uh, not quite sure what you make of that, but either way, uh, this is what we have at this point in time. All of these bolts can be tightened down. So you've got basically one same thing here. And then you've got this guy and this guy. I've also gone ahead, I've attached this sliding stop. Again, that's backwards to me. I'm old school, hung out with old dudes that were engineers back in their heydays. And a bolt goes top down, not bottom up. Because if the nuts back off, you would still have the bolt there. If these nuts back off, the bolt drops down and you have no mechanical connection. I'm also not sure... <laughs> that I'll even need that. So I've just left it as issued for now. Uh, I've also gone ahead and if you see this guy right there, uh, we've got these other little corner bolts and that is holding this caddy, which again, I thought was like for papers or something. That's actually for that little toolbox that the bolts are in. I have also spun these on. I have not tightened them. Uh, my weapon of choice here will be a pliers wrench. That's the easiest thing I can have access to that. Possibly one of the Vera Jokers, the adjustable wrenches. Uh, that would be cool because it's self-ratcheting. But uh, I have not taken the instructions advice and put the axles and wheels on just yet. Primarily because I don't have space on that side. And uh, this is working out pretty good. So I'm going to continue on here. But again, at this point in time, all of these fasteners can be tightened down. I've had zero issues with clearance using the impact socket. So that is good news. And on that front, I guess it's time to kind of get the upper framework and handles going here. So we will make that happen. All right. So the instructions want us to attach, you know, your cylinder rack support, tungsten holders, what have you, uh, to the back frame and then put hooks on it and then um, put hooks on handles, which are totally unrelated, and then come in and attach this to the actual structure of the cart. I have elected to do it my way. <laughs> And that is, since it's on this table and it's a little easier for me to work with it, you know, upright versus on my knees or something. Here we are. I've gone ahead and I've put the frame on, obviously, without uh, any of those supporting accessories. Now that this is in place right here, you got your M6x50 at the bottom. 
uh, sort of on the square tube frame and then again here at the top panel uh, at the square tube frame replicated on the other side since those two are fastened and tight uh, you want to go ahead once you get it mocked in kind of finger tight on all four corners go ahead tighten them down now at this point in time I'm gonna throw this thing together it's going to go and face away from the cart uh, so again the axle would be there I still don't have that on so it's going to face in this manner and we're going to have it it's going to fasten with m6 by 35s and then these little tiny hooks here uh, which i guess aren't all that different than these <laughs> now that i look at them uh let's see yeah i think they're all going to be the same so we're going to have some of those here they're going to attach with m6 by 30 same thing when we put them on those handles so i'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll kind of recap it all right so again i really debated doing a dukes of hazard impression there but uh all right here uh this is going to mirror what we have there let me check this text real quick all right got it and uh, then right there same thing then we get to the hooks there are six total hooks four of them are going to be identical you can see you've got sort of a longer back end and then you've got two drilled holes there if you look back here this would be what they call hook a it's going to be more of just like a u shape and then it's going to have a nut offset welded to the base of it there so all these handles that are going to go here and then of course on the uh pull handles over there this is what we're going to want is hook B uh, not quite equal and then two pass-throughs so uh, fasteners for all of those will be M6 by 30s so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get those put on as well all right so things have escalated here there's a simple solution for this but I'm trying to make things fun and exciting for me so uh, I had the deep on the Mac here this entire time I had the shallow on the Hazette tight quarters there right could not quite get the zet to fix swapped them out put this guy on to the matco that didn't work either i thought let me try the koken the koken is in that range where it technically fits but it does not clear the fastener right so i did it i busted out the smart case and that's what we are looking at here it's so close to fitting if this was a deal where the adapter let me try to wedge this thing out of here i may not be able to it's it's technically you know what okay we did it let me show you uh this might not come out uh, we're gonna have to tighten it down and maybe go a little extra tight but it got in there but if that was like a half cut bit with the adapter i think that would actually work this is gonna be interesting and i'm gonna need two hands so i'm gonna see if i can make this happen or get it stuck I'll solve that crisis and I'll show you a uh, fairly simple solution. Just look at that. Do you see the gap there? That's why I've got the shop rag hanging down so you can see it a little bit better. <laughs> that actually worked. Uh, I know what you're thinking, like, hey, didn't you have a ratcheting wrench? Yeah, but uh, we're going to try one more thing. While this works, it's not ideal. So I'm going to see if we can get one more candidate before we resort to just using the wrench. So, uh, Pretty proud of that little thing though. It's uh, paid its dividends twice now. So aside from just being a cool novelty, there is some practicality to it. So uh, let's see what we can do next. And there's my answer. Uh, well, obviously, if you did not know that smart case advent calendar deal, that's quarter drive. So we sized everything down a bit, but using that little bare handle style villa, uh, we're actually able to get in there with a ton of space. I have not tightened this down. We tightened that one, this one's still loose. Uh, so this will clear just fine, but uh, yes, we could have used a ratcheting wrench, but that's a cop-out You know that's gonna work. The fun is in finding something that saves time <laughs> That's then totally lost uh, If that was your real goal because you've spent more time playing around with different ratchets and socket combinations to get the ultimate setup here so we're gonna go to town here is that uh, 10 millimeter socket stava liquor drive ratchet and I assume we'll probably need these for the padded pull handles as well so anyway it's uh you know something I enjoy so <laughs> I'm just out here trying to have a good time so we'll get them tightened up and uh, get this thing wrapped up right, so once again kind of deviated from the instructions if you look back there you'll still see we've got these two hooks that should go here and what I've done I decided to be way easier to put these handles onto the frame before we put the hooks uh, so m6 by 50 millimeter 
of course your uh, lock and your flat up against the tube uh, this tube as you can kind of like see on these bins it's sort of got like the dimple die effect in it that's present on this side wall as well so it sort of helps the tube tuck in there on the handle but uh, I've got them loose right now I'll tighten them up as soon as I get those other two hooks on and uh, then we're getting real close to having this thing complete all right so this piece here with this little peg on it this is what they call the side rail and if you'll note those hooks that we drop down uh, are actually designed to accept those on either side so this is going to be a personal preference but if we look top down there is a hole here and there's a hole there that's where these come in again this is offset if you look at that nut and it doesn't seem centered that's because it's not it is offset to one side despite these brackets being equilateral on the uprights i think what we would want to do is have the corner post here and give more space here for like cord or whatever we're hanging around it so that's the way i'm going to put these together it will utilize the m6 by 35 millimeters so i'm going to go ahead and get these on and then all we have to do is backtrack uh to assembling the axle and i'll just lift this thing down again if you are doing what i'm doing do not lift by this uh it's going to slip out you'll want to hold from the frame uh be at the top shelf or the bottom but uh, yeah i'll get these on and we we will go to town all right so right here you can kind of see what i'm talking about we've got that gap and that is what i wanted to have on the outside so the way it was offset i chose to put the side bar if you will into the corner and then have the gap here in the front all right we got like 95 percent of this thing totally done on the toolbox at a working height which was awesome <laughs> And now uh, we're faced with putting the big casters on, if you will, the wheels, I guess I should say. Got the axle in. Again, if you have trouble stabbing it through side to side, just remember it's open on the bottom. You can fish it out there. But what we have, if, let me uh, set this here for you. We've got a spacer. This is one of the things that was in that little toolbox. And the way we're going to want to have this is basically like that so our big side is going to go in and ride against the chassis so when you drop this in top down we're going to have it like this and then uh, simply hoping we can one hand that and we did it's in place it kind of needs to shimmy a little over i don't want it to drop so what we have to do now is install the eclipse my hands are like ice i'm going to attempt to do this side tap it in have the clearance on the other side get the other one on anytime you work with those things probably smart to put safety glasses on or cover your eyes blink really tight probably safety glasses making it easier uh, but you just you never know where they're going to fly so i'll get that thing we'll prop this up we will slide in the plastic toolbox and see how many parts we have left over all right i'm really glad i said we'd see how many parts we had left over i would have seen these anyway because the eclipse were in there but there's also flats so we're going to want to have the spacer against the frame, then the wheel, then on the flip side, you're going to want to run a flat and then your Eclipse. So make sure you don't forget your flats. But uh, yeah, then this thing will be totally empty. So 100% efficiency, no spare parts, nothing left over. Must mean they either shorted us or we screwed something up. But uh, we'll get this together and see how it goes. Safety glasses are on. And there she is. Had a heck of a time. This one was fine. Use linesman's pliers from Kinepix. I've got the cross hatch on those. They hold really well that obviously i didn't have as much space over here plus these safety glasses keep fogging up but uh, i'd rather not have something fly in my face particularly in my eyes so we got her done uh, i had to use the uh, chisel driver and I went with a three pound just to get the job done but uh, you can see right here this is the spacer we've got the wheel you have the flat and the e-clip everything's lined up minimal play and we're basically ready to stand her up i'm sitting here contemplating if it's a good idea to tilt it <laughs> it's too late we're past the point of no return boom try not to tear that box up too bad all right so there we are there she is this is the vulcan welding cart rolls really well <laughs> it's wide open uh, sadly, I have nowhere to roll it because this place is a mess and there's no space, but uh, <laughs> there she is. So again, this is sort of, it's hard to tell, but this has got an angle to it. So when I roll it back there, you can kind of hopefully tell as we come down here. I think that gives you a good idea. 
So it'll tilt your machine back. That's usually going to be a good idea. Uh, that way you have better access to the dials as opposed to like having to come in and bend down type of a thing. I will eventually try to do a comparison for you between this and the Chicago when we've got things kind of more in order and organized and cleaned up a little bit. But yeah, I mean, for picking it up for around a hundred bucks with the uh, instant savings they had, I think it was a pretty good deal. And again, this one was a gift, so uh, sincerely appreciate it. <laughs> and that's a good birthday present, I think. Obviously, we do not have chains on because we're using it for a space heater, right? Right? Probably. <laughs> You'll have to stay tuned, I guess. But uh, yeah. So here in the back, one of the things we have not done, obviously there is chain if you're using this for welding uh, or a plasma cutter or anything that require gas or a cylinder. You've got this whole area here. That's obviously what this is. It's for the confines of the bottle. And then this right here, if you've never used something like this, your chain just drops through and then the link gets caught and you secure it at the low point, at the high bottom, and then here, sort of the midpoint on a typical cylinder, I guess. Uh, if you're not happy with that, you can certainly, you know, customize this, drill, put some rib nuts, whatever you need to do, kind of give yourself peace of mind, but you'll probably be seeing more of this thing in the future, but like I said, uh, should be a good height, particularly, now something like my little Lincoln, this would be a little bit low, realistically, uh, this height right here, somewhere between here and that shelf would be good for most if it's a big machine or if you're like running a cooler and it's going to like take a small machine and elevate it, um, it'll just kind of, the best thing you could do is if there's an in-store demo and you know all the dimensions on what you're wanting to put on it and then you can visualize. Obviously if the front of what you're going to put on this is like nine inches, this would be low. If what you're doing, you know, goes up like 14 inches and then dials back at a 45 degree angle, 9, and then the top is like 26 inches, you can have a tape with you, you can kind of visualize it that way. Another good thing to do anytime you're going to buy something from Harbor Freight and you've got plans for it, like for a certain thing, let's say that you're a Miller person or you've like splurged for a Miller welder and uh, you're going to go to town with it, there's a good chance somebody in the reviews, uh, and I'm not talking like YouTube even or like a garage journal type of deal, I'm just saying like the Harbor Freight's website. Uh, when people are really happy with something or like it, they'll typically like post up pictures. And so you may very well see uh, your exact machine, you know, present. You'll be like, hey, that's what that would look like. And in all honesty, that's kind of the best way to do it. Well, it's, uh, I just, I don't have space to get you like a really good look at this thing. And the shop is filthy. But again, she came together really nice. I have no complaints here initially. All the hardware was here, unlike with that thing that had no hardware. So that's a selling point. Therefore, I'm able to assemble it. Uh, if you're unaware, like if, if you're doing TIG welding or something, you know, this would be for your uh, filler rods and everything consumables we do have one final step here aside from chain if you're putting a cylinder there if you're just like doing something else you wouldn't have to have the chain back there obviously but supposedly this can now be used for whatever we want it to be used for so I'm going to snap it and we're going to stick it very difficult in there uh, we were having some contact with the bolt heads on that thing so I thought maybe their logic for having this inverted with the nuts on the top was actually because having them on the bottom would be more space <laughs> interference than just the uh, bolt head but who knows that may go away again that's just like a stop you can see there's two pegs back there that's gonna keep your machine if that's what you have up here from rolling off but yeah, what will we do with this? You will have to stay tuned and see because we we have some plans and they'll make sense when you see them. We just haven't gotten to that point yet. So with that said, it's like getting really late. I am ice cold and uh, I need to get inside, warm up a little bit. I don't think I'm going to eat supper tonight. I had a big lunch. So uh, I'll get the trash out, do all that stuff, maybe edit this mess. But yeah. 119 I believe isn't uh, that what I said was your typical price I think that's right because 15 off I instant savings is 104.99 yes way back in the day these were like retailing you know no deal at all for under a hundred just right under a hundred ninety nine dollar item but uh, nowadays that's not the case so 104 was a really good buy in my opinion oh boy <laughs> 
I tell you, I need to clean this up, but man, like my nose is running now. It's getting pretty bad. So that's all I got for you. Again, my apologies. We don't get like a better like showcase of this. There's just not space. I'm not going to lie to you. So uh, that's where this comes in. It's going to help take care of some of that. And then that's going to get out of here. I'm seriously considering ditching that and getting like some impact sockets or something i don't know but uh yeah it's uh pretty nice i have to say initially we'll obviously see how it works when we put what we want to put on it sorry i'm being vague i don't like to spoil things especially if they're going to be space eaters you know so <laughs> <laughs> uh, on that note i uh, hope you enjoyed hope you learned a little something as of right now i've got nothing negative to say about this i feel like it's a fair price would i prefer paying 49 to 79 for this yeah but for all intents and purposes for me to make this exact thing i would have a ton of time in it and uh, in terms of other options for welders I'll go into that at some other point in time because we're going to put a space heater on this. So, <laughs> it'll be a real nice height, don't you think? But uh, like I said, that's all I got. Pretty decent, I'd say, for the money. And uh, I've got no issues so far, but stay tuned. You'll be seeing this in the future. With that said, I got to go. I'm freezing. <laughs> I will catch you back here for more from the shop. Uh, if you have used a Vulcan welding cart for... A welder. What welder? How did it fit? Uh, feel free to leave that information. Same, it was like set up for a plasma cutter. If you love this so much, you went and you bought one for each one of your machines, or you got one at work, and then you bought one at the house. Whatever your story is, good or bad, feel free to leave your personal experience with it. Uh, similarly, if you're using this for a space heater, how did it work out? What's the brand of space heater? Uh, was it like ideally positioned? Could you change the trajectory with the space heater pivoting and get like a really good pitch on it? Uh, whatever information you've got, feel free to leave it down below. Again, good or bad, that's the ultimate goal to help people out with. I haven't put a load on this. I haven't tried moving it around more than just like 6 to 10 feet, really. <laughs> but uh, goes together well. The hardware is there. Looks good. And I think we're going to have a, a good service life out of her. So, again, that sidebar with the hooks right here, you can run that on either side. That would be particularly helpful if, say, this was going to nest this side was open where you could have cords or cables this side was closed off against another machine where it doesn't make sense to have something like that pretty customizable i'm happy with that but again uh, your thoughts and opinions always welcome if you enjoyed the video leave a like if you like other things we do i encourage you to subscribe youtube might just notify you that we put out new videos every Saturday at 9 a.m. Texas time. Same thing on Wednesdays. Typically tool content Saturdays, automotive on Wednesdays. Sometimes, depending on how much I've got going on. It might be slightly different, but that is the plan. So you can kind of count on those two days. Possibly more. You never know. But uh, the website is LoneStarMopars.com. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All three at Lone Star Mopars. With that said, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you back here for more action from the shop.